السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الأمين أما بعد فعود بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم In addition to the topics we have taken so far الحمد لله with the blessing of Allah سبحانه وتعالى Today we came up with the topic the essential part of our course islamic psychology psychology in the light of quran and sunnah if you look at the word psychology it is one of the most fascinating words of today's world and everybody is impressed with the terminology of psychology no matter what whether they understand the value of psychology or not but they willing to play a vital role in the field of psychology let me explain the psychology psychology is a scientific study of mind and behavior in humans and non humans and psychology includes the study of conscious and unconscious with feelings and thoughts if you really understand the quran quran deals with human behavior quran deals with everything related to human as prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and quran discuss more about the islamic human behavior so we could understand what exactly allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has designed for us so if you look at the quran you would understand the human psychology the human behavior but we need to understand the perspective of islam with respect to psychology do you really think that whatever we understand the word psychology we have everything in quran and we have everything in islam because if you understand the quran if you understand the islam you will have the actual human behavior of islam but without islam if you understand everything with respect to this topic everything has certain limitation and it has based on some false ideologies and false strategies so we need to understand what exactly the islamic psychology as we know that islam as a way of life it gives the comprehensive model of the human being with spiritual psychological emotional and social aspects from the teachings of islam we discover that that we connected to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the creator of the universe so the main objective of this course to describe that islamic perspective on psychology mental health and well being whereas an islamic psychology consists of philosophers scientists and researchers throughout the ages they understand the concept of human behavior based on their own understanding without islamic understanding so inshallah in the session we would like to explain the comprehensive differentiate between islamic psychology and an islamic psychology so in ge general definition we could understand the scientific study of behavior and mental process is all about psychology but we have to emphasize what is all about an islamic psychology if you look at an islamic psychology the first and foremost thing is without iman if you deal with psychology without iman 
So what remains with us? It's just only scientific research with human values, with human theories, without any concept of Iman. Imagine the psychology without Iman. From every psychologist in the particular era comes up with a theory. And this theory, it's not backed by Iman. So this theory, it's all about based on your human intentions or human behavior. And human behavior can be good as the best human and human behavior can be the worst human behavior. So if you have the psychology without Iman, so there is no parameter of Iman. So what kind of psychology we are having? This psychology deals with Kufr. This psychology deals with Shirk. This psychology deals with Atheism. So if you don't have Iman with respect to psychology, no matter what, they come up with highest forms of theories in the field of psychology and human behavior, but they didn't but this not relate to the concept of Iman. If you have the concept of Iman, then everything, if you add with respect to the psychology, it will be really beneficial and effective for us. If you just remove the word Iman from psychology, then you have countless search of different theories of scholars from the day one in the field of psychology are related to the human beliefs and human behavior without Iman. And this concern all about this psychology may lead you towards Jahannam with respect to Kufr. Whereas if you have Iman with psychology, then it's related to the concept of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No matter whatever you do, you have the concept of Iman and your work believes with respect to Iman. So the first drawback with respect to the Western psychology and an Islamic psychology, it's all about psychology without Iman. And some psychologists, they believe in God. But which theory do they believe? They believe in Tawheed? No, they don't believe in Tawheed. They believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in terms of Tawheed al rububiyyah Imagine the people of Quraysh, they believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more than the people of this era and this day and age. They don't believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They believe in God, but they don't relate this word God to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they don't have any proper concept of Tawheed. As we know that, we have three types of Tawheed. Tawheed al rububiyyah with respect to the Lordship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Tawheed al uluhiyyah this is the Tawheed where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent all the messengers, starting from Adam alayhi salam to Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to establish Tawheed and to eradicate Shirk. And Tawheed Asma wa Sifad, the beautiful names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you have the psychology with Iman, if you have the psychology with Tawheed, then this is the exact psychology that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks us to need about human behavior. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the divine books. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the messengers. All of them relate to human behavior with the aspect of Iman and Tawheed. And those who believe in Tawheed al rububiyyah but they're not believers. They are not actual mu'min. Why? The kuffar of Quraysh, they believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being the Lord, being the creator, being everything. But here, if they don't believe in Tawheed al uluhiyah then what kind of a psychology we are dealing with? Because they deal without Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They suggest therapies. They suggest all the behavior things out there without any perspective of Iman, without perspective of Tawheed. If we don't have Tawheed, then we don't have the actual essence of psychology in ourselves.
So psychology without Tawheed al-Uluhiyah, especially because some of the people, they believe in Tawheed al-Rububiyah. But do they reach to the level of Tawheed al-Uluhiyah? No. If somebody believes in Tawheed al-Rububiyah, does it enough for a person to be considered as mu'min? No. Since Kuffar of Quraysh, they believe in Tawheed al-Rububiyah, but they don't believe in Tawheed al-Uluhiyah that led them towards Jahannam. They were considered as mushrikeen, even having the enough knowledge about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's Tawheed al-Rububiyah. They consider Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al-Khaliq, al-Raziq, but they don't believe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as ma'bud. So psychology without Tawheed is no use. And this is very interesting word. Psychology without the creator. Let me explain to you. No matter what, all the psychologists and scientists of neuroscience, they deal with the knowledge of creation. They read the human behavior. They understand the psychology of human. But they are unable to understand the human is a creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All they deal with human behavior and the behavior of any living being without understanding this is the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they believe in psychology without having a proper knowledge of the creator. Even though they deal with the knowledge of creation without knowing this is the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They believe in the creation, but with the name of science and nature. Imagine, they discuss everything about human, but they don't believe human are the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They just deal with science. In order to understand the human traits, human behavior, the mindset of the people, but without knowing that this is the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah is the creator. So they don't have knowledge about the creator. They don't have knowledge about the creation. And they deal with creation with the name of science. They didn't realize human is the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Once they realize human is the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they would come to know about the creator. The creator of human is none other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah is the khaliq, Allah is the rab, so Allah is ma'bud. So if they understand psychology without the knowledge of creator, without the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then this psychology would lead to disaster. It doesn't have any kind of effectiveness towards the Islam. So psychology without the creator is learning about the human without knowing these are the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and without doing, giving respect and lordship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is the creator of human. So psychology without the creator is nothing. Now psychology without fitra. If we discuss with Islamic psychology, inshallah we discuss everything with respect to in human aspect or in the aspect of Islam that every person is based on his fitra. What is all about fitra? That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created something really effective for you so that a person can deal with human fitra. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the natural constitution, the innate nature, the original disposition. It's all about the fitra because Islam is a religion of fitra. If you understand the psychology without the concept of fitra, so we discuss the psychology with the essence, without the essence of fitra, it's of no use. So psychology without the soul, they don't have any concept of ruh. They, they don't have any concept of ruh because we believe as Muslims that 
purification of soul is one of the important aspects of psychology that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to discuss about the purification of soul because every person carried by their soul. This body is a worldly matter. But with respect to the soul, soul is forever with us. So understanding a psychology without a concept of Islam in soul, so what is all about? As we discussed that, a ruh in Islam has a great impact and significant structure. But if you understand the psychology without soul, we don't relate to psychology much more. We relate to psychology with mere scientific research based on human values without having the concept of soul. Psychology without nafs. Maybe we can name with many other structures. If you deal with psychology, you may find everything based on this structure, but without naming them. Maybe they relate to every aspect of psychology based on fitra, based on tawheed, based on nafs, based on soul. But they don't realize they are focusing and they are realizing on the aspect of psychology of nafs. But in Islam, we have nafs. We understand that. Like nafsul mutma'inna, nafsul lawwama, nafsul ammara. We discuss in detail with respect to Islamic psychology. But we do understand the psychology without these important topics, without these important elements is of no use. No matter what, they reach to the pinnacle of the psychological aspects of human intelligence and human behavior, but they don't carry the actual essence of psychology with all the subjects related to psychology. And psychology without heart. Imagine, why do I say the word without heart? In Islam, there is an interesting topic. If we deal with that, the Islamic psychology deals with the brain, the mindset, the human behavior. They don't give in, they don't give any kind of significance to the heart. They feel heart is a only organ that deals with the pumping of blood. It doesn't have related to the intellectual values, feelings, and the psychological aspect of heart. But if you look at in Quran, all the basis of understanding with respect to the Quran in heart. That's the reason behind this. You'll find countless examples of heart in the Quran. Whereas with respect to brain, we don't have much aspects to the brain. The reason we have considered heart is the important organ of body. Whereas if you deal with brain, brain is part and parcel of heart with respect to understanding the concept from heart. So an Islamic psychology, they prefer the brain and the mind over the heart. And they don't really give the significance to heart, significance to heart in the in the field of psychology. Whereas in Islamic structure, heart plays very vital role and it's the key role with respect to human behavior and psychology. That's the reason behind it. We all think that psychology relates to neuroscience and it's all about brain. Psychology doesn't relate to heart with respect to an Islamic psychology. So if you understand the psychology without the aspect of heart, so this psychology, it's mainly dealing with some behavior of your mind without, really the, without realizing the potential of heart. Like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stated that, Allah has set a seal upon their hearts. Imagine Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the significance to the heart. So heart has a value in order to understand, in order to relate, in order to logical reasoning and many other things. Because if you understand the value of heart in Islam, you don't have such value in an Islamic psychology. So the value of heart in Islam, it's more significant than the value of brain because we consider brain is subordinate of the heart with respect to the feelings. Imagine brain is based on the information we give. 
and it reacts based on the insights of the brain. Based on, we could not realize without having a true aspect of heart. So that's the reason behind is if we understand the psychology without the aspect of heart, it's of no use. And psychology without beneficial knowledge, see this Islamic and Islamic psychology, it's all about without beneficial knowledge. No matter what, they grab anything, what comes to their way without realizing is it beneficial for us or is not beneficial for us? Maybe they are based on harmful knowledge that really corrupt the aspects of psychology because they are not related with beneficial knowledge. So psychology without beneficial knowledge is of no use. And psychology without ethical values. These are the, if you understand that, no matter what, if we deal with the best human behavior and the worst human behavior, and we don't have any, the boundary line that differentiate between the best values and the worst values without having any ethical values. So this psychology is of no use. So since then, we have collected few demerits of psychology and the loopholes of an Islamic psychology deals with Islamic psychology without ethical values and Islamic psychology, an Islamic psychology without beneficial knowledge, an Islamic psychology without the aspect of heart, an Islamic psychology without nafs, an Islamic psychology without soul, an Islamic psychology without fitra, an Islamic psychology without the knowledge of the creator, an Islamic psychology without the knowledge of tawheed, an Islamic psychology without iman. Imagine all these aspects we have the psychology, but we don't have Iman. We have the psychology, but we don't have Tawheed. We have the psychology, but we don't have the knowledge of the Creator. We have the psychology, but we don't have the knowledge of Fitra. We have the psychology, but we don't know about the Ruh. We have the psychology, but we don't know about the Nafs. We have the psychology, but without knowing the actual aspect of heart. We have the psychology, but without understanding the beneficial knowledge. And we have the psychology without ethical values. So do you really think that this psychology would really help you? No matter what, if you understand the value of today's world in psychology, no matter what, how important the psychology and the field of psychology, but does it really benefit for us as Muslims? Because if you understand psychology help people in large part, because it can explain how the people react, how the people behave, and they can improve their decision-making, the stress management and their behavior based on understanding of the past behavior and to better predict future behavior. But do you really think that without having the Islamic values, are they able to reach to the level where they can please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, where they can understand the human behavior based on the Quran? Not at all. So let's move to psychology of Islam where we can have the structure of everything. So here we start the Islamic psychology because why I start the negative approach before we having the positive approach? Because this is the Islamic aspect. What is the Islamic aspect? So in order to establish Tawheed in a heart, we need to remove the love of Shirk. We need to eradicate Shirk. So this is the aspect. In order to implement the actual aspect of Islamic psychology, so we must detoc detach ourselves with respect to an Islamic psychology with all the defects that we realize so far. Now come up with Islamic psychology. Islamic psychology, when we get the word Islam, it's related to Quran and Sunnah. And let me tell you, when we say the word Islam, don't think Islam is just an old religion of 40, 1400 packs years back. When it comes to the word Islam, it has a history 
from the day one because Islam is the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Islam is the only religion selected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for us. If somebody would like to have any other religion than Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala won't accept. And all the prophets from the day one, from Adam alayhi salam to Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam, all are Muslims. The religion of prophets, all are Islam. وَلَقَدْ بَاثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ رَسُولًا أَنِ اعْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَاجْتَنِبُ التَّاغُودِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent every messenger to establish Tawheed and eradicate Shirk. So when, he, when we deal with the word Islamic psychology, some people would relate to the era of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they could relate to Islamic psychology with the presence of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They are in miserable condition. They have to realize that Islamic psychology deals with human from the day one since Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala created Adam Alaihi Salaam without letting Adam Alaihi Salaam the beneficial things. Do you think so? Not at all. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the human, Allah, sub, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the human, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala designed every guidance towards the human. So in the form of nubuwa, in the form of risala, the prophethood, the messengerhood, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Adam alayhi salam as the messenger of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Adam alayhi salam as the prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the guidance of tawheed, to establish Tawheed and to eradicate Shirk. So this is all about Islamic psychology. So what does it mean? So we have Islamic history in terms of Hijrah 1400 years ago. So what does it mean? It's all about the Sharia, not the actual deen. Actual deen is from the day one. Whereas the Sharia from one messenger to another messenger is different. Sharia based on Rasul. So when we have a new Rasul, Sharia would be changed. But it doesn't mean the complete deen is changed. The deen of every prophet from Adam alayhi salam to Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam is same. Whereas the Sharia of messengers would change from time to time. That the Sharia of Nu alayhi salam is different than the Sharia of Ibrahim alayhi salam. The Sharia of Ibrahim alayhi salam was different than the Sharia of Musa alayhi salam. The Sharia of Musa alayhi salam was different than the Sharia of Isa alayhi salam. The Sharia of Isa alayhi salam was different than the Sharia of Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam. Whereas the deen of Nuh alayhi salam, Ibrahim alayhi salam, Musa alayhi salam, Isa alayhi salam, and Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam is the same. But the Sharia of all these prophets are changed according to the timeline of the history and the people of the particular region. As Every prophet before, before Prophet وسلم, was for a particular re region and for a particular timeline. Whereas the Prophet وسلم, is forever. He is the universal prophet till the day of judgment. So Islamic psychology, when it comes to us, it doesn't mean that we have a psychological aspect from 1400 years ago. It's the psychological aspect from the day one with respect to deen. And we have come up with a sharia of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So we have Deen and Sharia. So we have the Islamic psychology based on the Sharia of Islam, Sharia of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Deen of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala with respect to every Prophet. So that's all about psychology. And when we say the word, and this explanation of Islam not only related to psychology, but this explanation relate to every aspect where we use the word Islam. And the reason why I had to explain the word Islam in such an extensive way, because most of the people believe that Prophet ﷺ is the founder of Islam, na'udhu billah, and Isa ﷺ was the founder of Christianity, and Musa ﷺ was the father of Judaism. It's nothing like that. Whereas all the prophets belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with one religion, with one deen. And every prophet has the same deen and the sharia is different. So in order to explain the actual word Islam, and so whenever we use the word Islamic, so we have the extension with respect to from the day one, from Adam alayhi salam to Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam, And it has been changed from time to time. The sharia and the final sharia would be the sharia of Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam. So when we say the word Islam, it has the deen of every prophet 
with the Sharia of Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam.